Hello. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, great to see so many DAO enthusiasts here. Uh, I'm Uber, and I work for, on the marketing and business side of the API 3 DAO. And I'm going to be presenting the fractional scaling of our DAO, basically. So before I get started, uh, who here heard of API 3 before? Like, raise of hands. Some? That's good, that's good. And who here knows about the Oracle problem? Again, raise of hands. Heard about the Oracle problem before? Okay, some. So basically, for those of you who have not heard it before, I'm going to be going into it slightly. Um, basically, uh, smart contracts require reliable real-world data feeds to provide meaningful services. If you want a loan, uh, for instance, as Aave, you need price details, and that is natively not available on the blockchain because uh, APIs cannot be directly accessed by smart contracts. The solution to this is, uh, quite frankly, to build the data that is needed into the respective blockchain that is needed on. How this typically is done nowadays is through such a structure. We have Oracle nodes here on the right side that are responsible for retrieving the data from like the real world, basically getting it from somewhere and then bringing it on chain. We have another entity on the left side uh, that is responsible for setting up an aggregation contract because you want basically the sum of all this, the median of the response that then basically gets fed into the application that consumes it, so the final product, which could be the Bitcoin price, the weather in Lisbon today, or any other data that you can imagine. This setup was very groundbreaking and enabled like a lot of use cases as you know it. DeFi as we know it couldn't exist without oracles, but we believe that there are certain issues with the current setup. Uh, the first thing I want to basically bring to your attention is that we believe that uh, the first issue is basically the entity that sets up the aggregation. While there can be hundreds of oracles on the right side that provide the data that you want, it's actually the entity that controls the aggregation contract that has a final say in what you consume because they are the ones picking out which oracles are used, for instance, for the Bitcoin price feed. And there is no way for you as the data consumer to influence basically where you're getting your data from. The second issue is basically that the majority of Oracle roads, nodes are actually not ran by the actual data source. If you look, for instance, on a stock exchange, it's not actually the stock exchange providing you on-chain with the data that they produce. It's actually somebody else telling you what the data is that you need on the blockchain. And finally, uh, these third-party Oracles, so to speak, are also not transparent about where they get their data from. So just to make an extreme assumption here, uh, but how can we as consumers tell that all of these three nodes that you see here are not getting their data all from the same source because they're not being transparent about it? And it would be pretty inefficient if they would all get their data pretty much from one source. So our approach or our solution to this inefficiency would basically be to simply get the data right from the source. So practically to call APIs uh, directly over the blockchain instead of relying on uh, middlemen to do this for you. So for this reason, we believe the Oracle problem is actually in, like in real, like actually the API connectivity problem. Because if you could basically call an API, aka the source directly over the blockchain, you would do so. Uh, this problem assumption pretty much brings us to our setup, which was, looks somewhat like this. Uh, we have on the right side uh, basically our Oracle nodes, which are directly operated by data sources. So imagine uh, Binance giving you the Bitcoin price directly, a stock exchange giving you stock data directly, a weather station telling you what the weather is directly without relying on a third party. And this does two things. Firstly, it creates full transparency where your smart contract is actually getting their data from, as everybody can on-chain see where the data is coming from. Furthermore, uh, it practically eliminates like the rent-seeking middlemen. You don't need multiple oracles anymore to call the same data source if the API itself is your data source. Uh, this is all made possible by our, by our Oracle solution, which is called AirNode. And AirNode is very simply set up. It is set up in 10 minutes by the API provider on their infrastructure that they're already using for their basically data infrastructure without handing cryptocurrencies, without knowing anything about blockchains. And this solution basically allows us to decentralize the source level of data. 
Also, uh, this is basically where the DAO comes in in all of this. Uh, these sources can still be aggregated. Like, you pr basically, sometimes don't want data of Bitcoin only from Binance. You maybe want to combine five exchanges or six exchanges. And this decision is basically managed by a DAO that decides who actually uh, is aggregated into one response. And this means that it is not anymore like a backroom team decision which sources are combined to each other. Everybody that wants to have influence on the data sourcing can have influence by being part of the API 3 DAO. And you become part of the DAO by simply staking API 3 tokens. And the final aspect of our project is basically that we all also offer insurance on our data through Claros arbitration. Uh, this makes security, cons uh, like security for consumers quantifiable because we believe it is somewhat of an utopian thought to think APIs can never malfunction. Like you can get wrong data at some point, but smart contracts don't care. They will still execute on the data. So it is important for data consumers that they are basically able to manage their risk in that regard. That was a little bit of like an oracle uh, presentation, sorry for that, but uh, I'm going to dive into more of the DAO now. Uh, our DAO is uh, basically a, a custom Aragon-based DAO, and it currently controls about 21 million USDC and 25 million API 3 that basically should help us uh, fulfill our vision of making first-party oracles, data source-operated oracles, become a reality. Uh, some of the things our DAO is pretty good at is basically all stuff solidity. We're pretty confident in providing uh, data on ETH and every other chain that is EVM compatible. We also have a good understanding of what data providers want and what dApps want and need, and we're pretty good at building good Oracle stuff. Uh, some of the things we're not very good at would, for instance, be uh, Rust or Substrate development. We are uh, all Solidity developers, so to speak, so we don't have a field in that. And Arnold is technically a chain agnostic, so we could serve a Solana, Polkadot, whatnot, like all these chains, if we had the capabilities within the DAO to do so. Um, we're also not good at speaking French. We have nobody that actually speaks French. So uh, we could use somebody that basically manages the French-speaking community or translates our articles and documentations into French. And there are probably also a whole lot of other things that we are not very good at. So how do we scale and become good at these things? The obvious answer of all of you would probably be to just hire people that can do this. Uh, but is that really effective is my question here. Because think of how many layer ones there are already. Do you want to hire basically five devs that deal with that specific layer one and then there's another layer one that you want to roll out onto and then you need to hire another five and another five or think about all of the languages in the world. Are you really capable of basically in a DAO setup hire all the people you would need to and manage them within, for instance, uh, language management team. It just becomes very unscalable at some point. And our vision for this is basically to scale through sub-DAOs. Um, Ilya from Near already mentioned the term in this presentation like an hour ago, and our friends at Aragon also like to call these inter-DAOs. So a sub-DAO is basically a group of people or already an existing DAO that excels at something. For instance, they're already a group of people that are good at Rust development or substrate development or it's a translate DAO that can help with Portuguese and French. And they are basically taking ownership of something that API 3 needs help with while benefiting themselves on it, monetary or however. I'm going to give a small example on this. So basically, uh, imagine that uh, there's a team of Rust native developers, uh, that is the programming language for Solana, for instance, for those of you who don't know, uh, comes and creates uh, an X API 3 token to serve data on Solana. They approach the API 3 DAO and say, we want to use your data providers, we want to use your Air node and adjust your code for Solana and then basically sell your data on Solana. We offer you 25% of our native token that will be on Solana. So basically, we sell your data for you on Solana, and you help us do that. The API 3 DAO would basically do this through technical support. We would uh, basically access, uh, give them access to large amounts of data providers. We currently have over 170 businesses that are 
running basically data sources directly and providing data. And we would obviously also support this potential team with marketing and business development efforts. And a lot of you are probably thinking now, it sounds like a franchise model, who would want to do this, and so on. But there's actually already precedent for this. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen uh, or heard of Ellipsis before. Uh, or for those of you who don't know, maybe a little word about Curve for once. Uh, everybody knows Curve here, probably used Curve or heard it, one of the major DeFi uh, projects in the space. And basically, uh, Ellipsis is a fork of Curve on Binance Smart Chain. Uh, Curve itself had no ambition or no desire, call it whatever you want, but they didn't want to deploy on Binance Smart Chain. But the Ellipsis team wanted to make that product, which is very much used on ETH, available on Binance Smart Chain. So they basically approached Curve and asked for their algor algorithms and permissions to basically deploy this exact product on Binance Smart Chain and offered them 25% of the tokens of their native token ellipsis uh, on Binance Smart Chain. And uh, you see Curve's answer at the bottom, why they said yes to this. Uh, the deal was so good that basically they had to authorize the use of their algorithms. And in the same fashion, we think that we're building a framework that can be deployed onto multiple other chains. And we're basically creating the groundwork where other DAOs can join us and continue excelling at what they're good at be it good at a language, good at development of some language that we're not good at, and basically build this big infrastructure where we have the API 3 DAO in the middle and all these other sub-DAOs connecting and adding value while benefiting also themselves. And that is pretty much the presentation. Uh, I think I have a lot of time for questions now, so... If there are any, go ahead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, has anyone got any questions? All right, here I come. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you for the presentation. It was really good. How do you verify the data sources with API 3? So, you, yeah, I was just wondering, how do you trust the, the data? The data itself, uh, you're basically approaching real-world businesses. For instance, we, have, we are partnered with Luna Crush or FTX, and these people make documentation available. They're basically publishing a smart contract address and saying, this is our air node. So you're basically trusting... Uh, the reputation of the real-world business behind it. Because FTX providing you bad data is probably reputational damage for FTX if there are, for instance, liquidations that happen on the basis of this. Uh, and in the same fashion, also, what a lot of people don't think of, also with third-party oracles, they're actually getting their data from the same source. It's not like they're magically getting that data out of thin air. They're using the exact same people. What we do is simply eliminate the people that stand between us and the data. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.